Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. We are now. If you can hear me, that means you are on YouTube watching this video. And just gonna say it. yes, um, we are continuing with the same book, Proverbs or Parable. And this time we are gonna be in chapter 3. So let's start. Chapter 3. Can you guys imagine or believe it? We're already in chapter 3 now. Yeah. Little we you know, it's gonna be chapter 31. Let's start. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandment. I think this is pretty much self explanatory. Um, okay, basically. When Bible says my son, it doesn't necessarily mean just the son. The daughters also need to keep the commitment. So, yes, I know it says son, but it's not simply for the men or but it's also for the women. It's like when the Bible says you uh, mankind, you know, it's not just men, but men and women. So, yes, they like Bible use those terms that look like it's just for masculine gender but it's um, basically for all the people that are in the earth for length length of days and long life and peace shall they shall they add to thee now here's the problem with that part people might be thinking well if this is true why is it that the people who keep God's commitment are the ones that die quicker? They are the ones that have all the problems in the world. Very much pretty, very good question, but there's a great answer for that. Satan does not bother people who he already has in his pocket, right? So imagine you had two bushes, right? One is brown, almost dying. One is green. And you want to make sure they both die. We're not going to waste your time on the brown one. It's already dying. The green one, you're going to bother. Do everything you can either cut some branches, cut the root, and um, so you can wither away. Same here, same thing here. When you hear that Bible says, yeah, keep my commandments because length of days and long life and peace shall, had, shall be added to thee. To thee, people might be thinking, well, this is a contradiction because looking at the world, this was going on. But the problem is this. We forget those who keep God's commandment are the ones that are going to be in trouble. Why? Because you dare not follow Satan. But at the end, we know that for sure the trouble is only for a period of time. Because those who actually keep God's commitment, actually, they are the ones who are going to have the long life, the long days, and the peace. Yes, it may be a hard time right now, just for a moment. But if you compare that to eternity of happiness, you realize, man, I could have done at least a thousand years of this trial. Compared to eternity, yeah, a thousand is like just one second. So that's what I mean by here. Yes, it is true. Those who keep God's commitment, they're going to have long life, long days of peace, and everything else added to them. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon thine, the table of thine heart. Very interesting. You know what that means? There is another verse in the Bible that talks about bind them around thy neck, thy neck, and write them upon not thine heart, but upon thy forehead. If you know what that is, then you know what it is. If you don't know this verse that I'm referencing to, is talking about the Sabbath. Yes, the God's commandment about the Sabbath. This verse I just mentioned, the Bible says, it shall be is it shall be a signet upon thy forehead. That was about the Sabbath, meaning the seventh day of the week. And of course, 
according to where you are on this planet, it might be a different time. So here it can be Sabbath right now, and maybe in let's say in the California area or Hawaii, it's still. Well, let's say today is it's already midnight right now, so it's already midnight. So it's, it's well, I mean, okay, it's the Sabbath begin at sundown, but let's say midnight, right? So it could be midnight right now, but then it's still a different day in Hawaii because midnight hasn't come yet in Hawaii. So yes, bind them. The Sabbath was a signet. It was a sign to bind upon your to bind around your neck and on your forehead, actually. And of course, if you have mercy with you, then you cannot have any issue. Verse number 4. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and men. Yes. And I don't think that has any explanation I can say about it. You know you have favor. Um, you know what the Bible says in Luke chapter 2 verse 52? Luke chapter 2 verse 52. Bible says in Luke chapter 2 verse 52, and Jesus grew up, right? I don't know in French. In stature, in grace, uh, before men, and God. So, when you have God with you, you're going to have faith. People may not like you, but they cannot talk down upon you. They cannot talk bad about you. Yeah, they can try to, de- to, to downgrade what to, what to do or downplay you. But they can't say anything wrong about you. Why? Because they will not be able to find anything. Look at Daniel when when Xerius or Darius became king and they were trying to put Daniel to, to, to death. The Bible says they couldn't find anything against Daniel. So what did they do? They used something about God. So when you see people trying to destroy your life, it's because they cannot find anything to against you. So what they're gonna do? They're either gonna go after you physically because they can't go after you morally because they cannot find anything to say. Oh, he did this bad thing, or they can go after your your beliefs. So if you actually follow the seventh day of the week, they're gonna say, "Whoa, well, you can't if you're not gonna work on the seventh day of the week." You're not gonna be able to work over here. That 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 already that already happens, and it's gonna happen again in the future. Okay, verse number oh, five. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy path. I think this verse right here. Everyone should know. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, in all thy ways, acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy path. Why? Because people think, "Oh yeah, I did this. It was me, actually. Me. It was me." People make song. Well, it's all about me. So everything that that I that, that that happened in my life, I did this. But they forget that um, the same way they can be talking right now, they could be dead the next second. So God is keeping you alive for a purpose, for a reason. But sometimes people forget. Oh yeah, your life is not for itself. It's not, actually your life is not even for you. Because if you die, you cannot resurrect yourself. So. Nothing that you do is just you. Yes, you put your effort into it, but who gives you the intelligence to do it? Who gives you the wisdom to go through it? Who gives you the strength to go through the, the, the pain? It's not, it's not you. People around you also affected how you um, behaved during those times as well. And of course, God is the one that gives you all of that what you need to be successful in this life. So yeah, um, verse number seven. Oh yeah, be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. So yes, 
Actually, you know what? Let me actually show you guys something very interesting. Have you guys read the book of Job? You know, one of the things about fearing God is also to depart from evil. Let me show you that. Let me show you this. Actually, no, I'm not going to. Yeah. Here is this. Job chapter 1. Look at this. There was a man there was a man in the land of Oz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright. You know people I like to say, Oh, nobody's perfect. Oh well, really. One that feared God and is trueth or meaning or depart from evil. That was Job chapter one. First chap first verse. People have to say, oh, nobody's perfect. Really? You can become perfect, but people don't want to become perfect. So yes, when you fear God, it also, it also means to depart from evil. Because you cannot respect God and keep doing evil stuff. You cannot say you love God and still, I mean, even myself, I still sin. But you can't say you love God and always wanting to sin. Wanting to do what is wrong. You are a liar. It shall be health, health to thy knife, to thy navel, and marrow to thy bones. So you wanna have a great life, great density, great bone density, great um, sense of smell, great health. Well, you better stop. Um, you better start doing God's will, and depart from the devil. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thy increase. People who have a problem with paying, with with giving their tithe to God, they want to cut on the tithe. They want to take some of the money, go gambling, spend it, and whatever they have left, oh yeah, I forgot, God, here's your tenth person. So once you get that paycheck, not your gross, not your net income, but your gross income, that money right here, the one even before government takes tax on it, whatever that gross income is, you take that first fruit, that 10%. That belongs to God. Not the rest of it, just the first 10% of the whole paycheck. Yeah, I know we don't like that part, but hey, that's what it is. I'm going to say it how it is. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Have you guys noticed that sometimes people who pay their tithe, they may not have money, but they are never out of money. In any situation, they are, they are never out of money. I can tell you that. Long story short, I didn't have enough money in my account, I still give my tithe, and guess what? I spent a whole month without buying any food. The whole month. I ate three times a day, every single day. Didn't buy any food. Just acting on my faith. Given the tithe, even when the circumstances were against me. And therefore, God blessed me with that. My son, despise not the, ch the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as the father, the son in whom he delighteth. Now, that doesn't mean that those that are not corrected, God doesn't love them. No, it simply means this. There is a point in time where people stop listening. Their conscience is gone and God cannot do anything. Everyone on this planet, at a certain point, God was correcting them until they shut their ears to God's um, correction. So, for instance, let's say um, I decide to do something wrong. God's going to keep telling me, hey, this is wrong. Hey, this is wrong. He's going to allow tribulation to come in my life to show me that, hey, what you're doing is wrong. And because of that, I can't, I'm not going to be happy with this. I'm, I'm going to try to keep you uh, away from doing this kind of stuff. But as you keep persisting, 
Because God cannot remove your freedom of choice at all. He can't do that. And he will not do that. As as you keep on doing that same wicked stuff, same thing for Satan. God created him many, 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 many times, but he kept on the same path until there was no turning back. And there was a point where God would not even be able to chase to chasten you because you wouldn't even listen to him. At that moment, it's the end zone, no way back. But guys, I'm gonna stop it right here. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lead not into your, your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall hmm, direct thy path. It was again the Open Veil TV. Food for thought.